classic. Um, this book is called Taishan Gaimpian, and of course, we speak Mandarin, and we would know Taishan Gaimpian is a Taoist book, and Master Qing Gong has been promoting the um, back to the roots kind of uh, uh, education as um, a Buddhist uh, practitioner, because we are not uh, going to achieve anything without a proper foundations, and being a good human is the priorities. Uh, and this um, book is primarily focusing on karmic aspects. So cause and effect, you read what you sow, uh, be careful what you think, because you know what you think will become what you act and what you say, it, and hence it will become your, um, you know, your results. Uh, what happens to you at this moment is a result of the past. So those are those are the common uh, knowledge uh, we share around, and this one goes in depth into exactly what we did that yields negative results, or what we did that yields positive results. So what to avoid, Bi uh, Xiong Ma, and what to approach, Qu Ji Ma. We all want to have auspicious stuff, good stuff, good luck, right? Um, good things happening to us, so Qu Ji. And then we all want to avoid calamities, disasters, unforeseen you know, negative circumstances um, in our life, in every aspect of our life, Bi Xiong. So that's the whole point of this book, Qi Ji Bi Xiong. Uh, and to understand that, we need to understand what makes things negative or uh, disastrous, Xiong. What makes things, um, you know, auspicious, good, Ji. So, you know, you can look at it on two sides, positive and negative. And that's how we approach every single phrase. Um, so without further ado, we'll begin with our uh, part 14 of section 3, Crimes and Offenses. Uh, last week we talked about, uh, before that we need to chant Amitofo. Yeah, let's do Amitofo first. Amitofo, 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 Amitofo. A mi to fo, a mi to fo, a mi to fo, a mi to fo, a mi to fo. Good, uh, good day, everyone. Um, today we'll continue on part fourteen, cruelty and petty, of section three, crimes and offenses. As you can see from the titles. Uh, we've been through a lot of um, sections in this book, Taishan Gaim Pian. Uh, section 3 primarily talks about what not to do, right? And we can approach it in, you know, literal sense of what this is bad and why this is bad. And then we talk about some stories, if we can pull out some stories uh, in the past or in our modern uh, circumstances. And also we can talk about what to do instead, right? Because they tell you what not to do then obviously it tells you what to do as well. Uh, so all these are all negative um, acts, you know, negative deeds that use negative karma, something to avoid if you want your life to go upwards trajectory, not spiraling downwards. Um, and all of them do not um, escape the understanding of, you know, uh, cause and effect of, you know, self and others, of how we uh, carry ourselves in different positions, in different walks of life, uh, in respect to the others. Um, this is all about when you deal with other people and deal with yourself, you know, make with some certain decisions and what you act, right? As a government officials, mostly, it talks a lot about, you know, in high places, high position, in authorities. It can be as small as in family, you know, as a daughter, as a, as a you know, parents, or in a small organization as well, or in amongst your friends, right? Our behavior, our attitude, what we should um, be aware of when we make a decision or do something or think something. So this one is about cruel and petty, cruel and petty. So the opposite would be benevolence or you know, compassion and big heart or generous. Uh, so last week we talked about this um, attitude of you know being regret after you gift you know to others 
as it can be anything, any charities or even gift to your friends, uh, those people who need your help, right? You help them, but you regret it, uh, the, the things or the favors that you gave them. You want to take it back or want to salvage it back, that kind of mindset. Uh, it's very um, negative in the sense because this is not a, a pure intention, right? Uh, cause and effect is all about how pure our intention is when we do that. What is pure intention? A pure intention is one that do not ask for anything in return. Uh, if we ask for anything in return or want something in return for that, it's a transaction. It's not a pure, uh, pure act of kindness. A pure act of kindness is because you do it just because it's right thing to do. And when you finish it, you don't think about it. Don't replay it, right? You just did your best and you feel like, you know, you have done what you can uh, and you move on with your life. So that's when people actually use biggest merits because they didn't ask anything in return. So that's how it works. If you, the more you ask or the more you're trying to be calculative um, of what you did, good and bad, uh, good or bad, then the more it will come back to you, uh, the, the lesser you will get. Because our um, our xing liang, our um, generosity is not uh, reaching, not big enough. Uh, it's like a container, it's too small to um, receive the benefits. Right? Even the benefits coming to you, you can only receive this much because your container is small. You give um, very little. And this can be as, like, you can give $1 million or something, but you always have something in, be- in return. The mindset, I want to get some good reputations, or I want to get, you know, even richer and stuff like that. That kind of mindset compares to some people who actually give $5 to someone really hungry so that he can get a hot drink, you know, in the middle of a cold night because he just want to help them. Their merits are not the same. Right, the people with that one million dollar might have lesser merits than people who give that five dollars because their heart is different, placed differently. One is asking for something in return, transactional mindset. The other one is purely want to help them at, to the best of their abilities, you know, at the right time as well when they need it. So that's very important. Um, and having regret will discount your merits. Uh, when you give, you give, right? Give it wholeheartedly. When you decided on that, you, you just give it, right? And the second one is when you borrow stuff, you have to return it, of course. And this can also go into the form of, um, you know, your words. You know, when it comes out, it does not, you know, you don't retract it back without any good reasons. Um, this, very obvious, will build up, you know, your reputations and your standings amongst others. And... People who, you know, um, never return what they borrowed could never be trusted. Again, right? One time you might gain advantage over that person, you know, but, you know, as a saying, right? Fool me once, my bad. Fool me twice, you know. Yeah. Fool me twice again, then it is really, you know, foolish, right? So, so we move on to the next one. Uh, to be agitated in seeking the realization of one's ambition and fail to cultivate the merits necessary to attain them. Hmm. To push one's subordinates to the breaking point. Fen wai ying qiu, li sang shi se. So first one is fen wai ying qiu. What is it? Something outside your um, outside your current um, current standings. So. You take something that you're not supposed to take at this stage. Um, how do we how do we get uh, a more concrete example of this? Um, very obvious, like in the if you are like, supposed to have this much, you know, income, and you're trying to uh, get bribed or trying to hint at them, you know, give me some sort of perks and benefits outside your what you're supposed to receive, then it's outside what you, uh, you you're taking what you not should be taking right uh, and this ying chu is means right you want to uh, you ask too much right it's greediness we're asking too much um, and the second half is about uh, 
maximizing profit, right? Maximizing. So this is against a lot of mindset we have nowadays, right? Maximizing profits. Isn't that the whole point of having business and all that? Um, this also mentioned about a kind of attitude. You know what I mean? Like, yes, you can get 100% of that uh, business or deals or gain, but if you have something called, how to say, um, something we, we call it a community mindset or mindset of uh, a bigger bigger horizon, right, than just simply having profits or having gains at that moment, then you will understand you need to do some sort of giving in, in when you receive so much, more than what you ever need, right? You, um, and this this is a very important attitude because you want to get really successful in life and get really uh, a very big um, horizon in our life. We got to have to learn when to stop, you know, when to hold ourselves back and assess, you know, like did I get too much? You know, if is my greed getting more and more um, insatiable? Is is it getting too much? Right, overwhelming. Right, I have one house, two million dollars house. Now I want to get another one. Right, invest in all that. Yes, and then after that, more and more and more. So my whole mind was obsessed with that, rather than actually use this money to do something actually useful, um, to do something actually helping people. Right. Um, also, th- this also has to do with humility as well. Like how a person have huge merit depends on their attitude. If pe- people are always, um, you know, getting too narrow mindset, or you know, I just want to get, um, I want to, I don't want, to, I want to push over everyone else in order to get my, 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 my share. You know, no matter what it takes. Uh, I would um, I would not give out any quarters in order to, to protect my interests you know, without even leaving a space for others right? that kind of mindset it, it's a it's a sign of a person who's going to lose all his merit and fortunes because merit and fortunes are not based on this crude understanding of Oh, uh, if I control the resources, I get most of the resources and then I can extract everything and then it's all mine. You know, it's a very crude way of thinking it because who, like, you can't do it by yourself. You can't do anything uh, big by yourself. When things get big, you need a group effort, team effort. When it gets to a team efforts, you cannot avoid sharing it. You have to share it, no matter how selfish that person is. Right, they have to share it because if you don't share it, no one will willing to work with you. And if you no one willing to work with you, your merits and fortune, of course, cannot grow. And I'm saying it from a more pragmatic understanding, but in terms of the actually sage teaching is out of people with the benevolence, with kindness, they always are abundant. Their heart is always abundant, even though they are material. Uh, material condition is very um, bad. Like, you know, they, they drink, eat, everything they enjoy is very minimal. But their heart is rich, right? And this is not romanticizing it. This is like, this is how it works. A people with boundless merits, they are not tied up with this physical material comfort only, all right? They also have a sense of mission, a sense of uh, goals bigger than just current eat, sleep, drink, right? It's no different than you know, well-kept animal as well, right? If we, if our goal is just to do that, you know, enjoy and enjoy and enjoy and, 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 and pleasure our five senses, what makes us different than a very well-kept pet dog or a horse, right? So what makes us human and what makes us have a huge capability is our ability to organize in a mass scale and our ability to do something extraordinarily terrible or extraordinarily amazing depends on what kind of ideas leading us along and that's why we have this teaching coming up right and that's when this money and all the fortune is your tool in order to benefit more people rather than you being lead by the money or lead by the fortune or lead by the 
some outside circumstances. So that's the difference between sages and the ordinary people. Is sages understand themselves very well. They know what what's the red line. They don't cross. They know understand. They understand that they need to see sh- they, they they need to see sh- their own personal desires to a reasonable limit. Uh, eventually empty it, but normal people they start with that, limit it a bit, and then focus, put their focus above the basic comforts into something bigger, right? Educations, right? How to help next generation have a better mindset so that they don't doom themselves to a to a worse worse society, to this deteriorating society, right? And also talk about facilities setting up you know bigger better um system or better uh innovations company those things are important to uh our life as a society but always come back to our mindset and our um you know what do we put priorities on um this one it happens most of the time because you know there is a lacking severely lacking of um, cause and effect teachings you know cause and effect teachings is so um, needed especially nowadays compared to even moral education as well because that one is a slow slower process this one is just telling you you're going to lose this if you don't do that you're going to get this if you get it goes straight to the what's benefit what's beneficial what's harmful it's a it's a meng yao in the Chinese. It's like um, 在乱世你要拔乱反正，你就要用一个很强的猛药。In this world of, you know, we call it chaotic world. Chaotic in the sense of everyone's heart are not settled. They have no uh very good direction, sense of directions. They are very lost. You know, everyone say everything, and it's splintered like a. There's no. There's no unity in a sense. There's no sense of compass and directions, and this kind of world, in the outside, it's beautiful. It's high technology. It's luxurious. It's you know uh, exuberant. But if you open the gift wrapping inside, is a lot of there's a lot of um, issues, right? And that issue is not just one country, one society. It's whole world, right? And that kind of scale. That was not done in the past before needs a new, not brand new, but how to say reinvention of our mindset, right? Because in the past we've been chasing technology innovations, trying to maximize profit, but we didn't realize that you can't just have a comfort life without a fulfilling spiritual life or emotional life, and this cannot happen if you. Just only focus on technologies. You gotta have to focus on the people, the communities, you know, friends, families. Those things cannot change, no matter how advanced the technology is. And this needs this kind of mindset, you know, moral education、It、needs to build up a consensus.、Um, and if everyone goes in this kind of direction of, you know, seeking what's not theirs, that means basically stealing other people' stuff, because. You, if you, if you, if you, if you desire getting too much, right, you can't control it. What you will do next, if you're in the position of power, is you will steal people's ideas. You will do whatever it takes to get yourself another two billion on top of your five billion, so that you can, you know, satiate your bottomless bottomless hole. Even though you only、um, needing this much, a little, what you actually need is not so much, but the inflated. Desire and ego needs to fill this bottomless pit with all this、um, fame and titles and fake, you know, facade and stuff like that. Not to say that we should not pursue、um, a career or success, but what we should understand uh, when, like a tour, you know, when is it? When do we put a break in that? And then when do we change our direction? Benefit yourself and others. Um, it's essential because if you want to do big, you want to go further than just yourself. You want to be able to organize a massive, you know, group effort to create huge stuff, big stuff. You gotta have to bring people together. To bring people together, you can't just stuck with that mindset of you know,、um, can I have one up 
against these people, competition and stuff like that. You got to have to think about, you know, how do I actually spread this, you know, huge amount of benefits to everyone else? And, and how do we incentivize them, help them, you know, to have a better life in not just physical salary, but also their emotional, also their, you know, their spiritual needs, also their, their you know, psychological needs as well. This is how you, this is how one person actually be, leads the world. This is how sages have, uh, work. They fix themselves, they also help other people when they can. So if you look at current um, situation we have, um, this is a philosophy of our society, you know, always, you know, advertising something, telling you that you need this, you know, now you have Toyota, you need, you need a BMW, now you have BMW and you need a Lamborghini, it never ends, now you have Lamborghini and you get a private jet, um, that's a misused of motivation. That is motivational, of course, but it's misusing, um, misusing it, misusing our energy. Uh, in Buddhism, there's also endless pursuit, but the endless pursuit does not rest on the external wealth. That's why Buddha, with all his power and his uh, wisdom, they, he do not pursue the path of princehood or kingshood. He could have united the whole India and, you know, becomes another Alexander the Great if he wanted to. But there's, how long does Alexander the Great's empire last? How long does the Mongolian empire last? Right? Even the, the famous one in Tang Dynasty and all that, they don't, they don't last more than a few hundred years. How long does Buddha's teaching last right now? 2000. How long does Confucius' teaching last? 2500. Right? And he was praised and, and, and being uh, treated as teacher of by many emperors the past so that's the priority he puts see it's endless as well right it's bottomless but it's not um, towards a futile end it's towards a more how to say fruitful end so that's called wise, wise wisdom wise choice sages do not like Mencius right a lot of people ask back in the spring and autumn states they ask Mengzi right like what is Li right because we all talk about benefits cost and benefit, right? What's the benefit? What is the, the cost, right? And then, of course, a lot of people have a stereotype of those people who follow this kind of sage part where it's like, oh, no, we don't talk about that. We always talk about uh, moral high ground and stuff like that. Yes, it's important to have a good characters. Those, those things are important. These are and all that. We still need to talk and learn about that. But it's wrong to say that sages do not talk about benefits. But their benefit is not about, oh, how much money I earn, how much house I buy. Those are, those are one person's business. They are talking about business of thousands of souls in present and future. So they, they are yielding, he's, he's reaping the benefit. He's on behalf of thousands of souls, millions of souls, countless souls in his era and the future era, even now. When you read his word, Liang Hui Wang Wen Meng Zi Yue, He Wei Li. Right, those um, kings back in the era, they trying to um, build dominance in the era, in the uh, in in the in the space back in the ancient China, and they're trying to dominate the rest of the country. So how do I be strong? And Manchus talk about the Confucius path, right? To be benevolent, to be kind, Wang Dao, right? To to treat people uh, with respect, uh, basically to be a good king, benevolent king. Do not use military unnecessarily. Um, reduce the tax. The burdens, uh, improve the you know irrigations and all that of the peoples. Also treat the people with wide wisdom and knowledge with respect. Li Xian Xia Si, right? Put down your um, position, Jia Zi. You know, put down your um, arrogance, uh, your position. You was your emperor, right, or king. Put down that kingly attitude and be humble when you're inviting a very um, wise person into your court to advise you seek counsel from the wise right so those kind of mindsets it's there but everyone was like no 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 I just want to say how do I get strong quickly and get fast quickly which is the same mindset we have right now um, yeah so if we if we understand that we understand that the ending will only be more competitions and more um, warfare and more um, zero sum game basically because everyone's trying to one up 
one another and it's going to cause more harms um, towards the society in general, right? In the end of the day, people have to pay the debt. So back to our ourself, what can we do, right? Um, how do we cultivate merits? How do we cultivate fortunes? And does it just all about personal, you know, internalize the teachings and that's it? Does it have to anything to do with the outside world we're living in? Right now you're studying or you're going to work, you're also pursuing profits, you're pursuing better life, better quality of life. Is that in conflict? Right? I would say with confidence it's not. Right. Uh, but it's always about priorities. Like we can do what we want to make our life better, but we also must understand there's more to it than this. And we continue to do what we're doing, improving our life, just like Mr. Liao Fan did. He's improving his life. It does not stop him from benefit everyone else's life. And in fact, because his life is improving, everyone has confidence in what he's saying. Oh, changing destiny. If you can't even change your own destiny, you tell everyone to change their destiny. Who would believe it? Or if you go to a talk and say how to get rich fast, you can only ask him, how much do you have? What is your net worth at the moment? Right? If I say, oh, how to get rich fast, compared to Warren Buffett saying how to get rich fast, uh, how to get your wealth, which one would you listen to? Right? Or Master Cheng De has, um, Mr. Ch uh, Venerable Cheng De has introduced an, a very good figure, Inamori Kazuo. I always will bring his name up because he is a Buddhist. He is a um, huge entrepreneur in Japan and um, he founded two companies he saved the Japan airline from the virtual bankruptcy into a profitable company so all these are you know functionings you now he's in the society's side he's he's a very influential person he's a very capable person he's entrepreneur he able to you know reap massive benefits for a lot of people not just himself He's very well off, he's very rich, but he's also able to do this and help a lot of people. That's the kind of mindset we need to have. Uh, if we don't have that conditions and that capability, we start learning this thing in order to build ourselves up. You know, Of course, we be accord with the conditions, right? In the end of the day, all these are, um, you know, are conditional. When condition comes, you take this opportunity recognize it and you improve your um, standing and improve uh, your cultivation and if this condition has passed then you move on and you continue in improving yourself in your own um, peaceful quiet life all right um, so back to that what's beyond like what what actually uh, should we seek Right. What should we put a lot of effort in seeking right now? Right. It's a peace of mind. I realize that without peace of mind, without ability to um, be calm and able to put yourself, you know, um, to be calm, to be at, at peace with yourself, you're unable to open up for more um, teachings or opportunity outside even the buddhist teaching you need to practice based on the principle of jeting hui right the precepts the what to do what not to do and then thing is able to maintain calm compassionate even though you have encounter a very difficult people or difficult situations uh, or even humiliating one and the last one is hui which is the wisdom to see to spot opportunities, wisdom to find out, um, to help uh, people when they are needing your help or wisdom in managing relationships with others in your school, in your uni, in your company, in your family, in your relationships, um, in your organizations, your countries. So where do we start in this, right? Our family. Right. parents, friends. So those parents, teacher, friends, right? Parents, of course, they are closest to us. And friends, uh, they are people who we go to when we have, you know, encounter issues. We need someone to talk to or we just have companions. 
and our teacher who gave us knowledge, wisdom, including Buddha and, and Confucius and Master Ching Kong. Those are teachers or your mentors at work. So we go to them. And how do we manage this relationship? So without going to, you know, disperse, there's only two things we need to remember. Number one is towards our close one, our parents, we need to focus on love and respect. Right? These two words, love and respect, Xiao Jing. So filial piety, if we put it in the most core essence, is love. So out of love, you will not do something that will harm them. Right? Out of love, you will not do something that will hurt them, that will uh, bring them to shame or make them worried. Uh, out of love, we will take care of them. Right? This is what Xiao means. Right? And that kind of um, love is a, it's a, it's a sprout for something bigger. In Buddhism, it's all about infinity, right? So when you push it up to a higher level, it becomes compassion. There are so many levels of love, right? They are from the most basic one and most, like, the one that everyone has is with their parents, with their guardians. Um, and then we expand to, you know, your siblings and then to your friends and then to your uh, neighbors, to your um, company, right? To your uh, communities and then countries, strangers, right? And then even other species, animals. That's so why we have vegetarian acti uh, activities in Buddhism because it's compassion. And then also towards universe, the world. Those have those things have its um, incremental steps to get there, right? And if you say suddenly you went to you know a stranger and they say I love you, and then but you're not treating your own you know close friends that's been with you since you you um you know you were young, or your family, your parents, or your your friend who's sticking by you by many years with the same level of love. Of course, it's different, of course, but there has to be a bottom line on this, right? If these are, are not solid between your close entourage, how can you have actual long-lasting relationship with someone who you just met two months ago? It's all just desires. And that thing is fun and amazing and exciting, but it will run out very quickly, right? You can't feel this anything else with just pure passion you need to temper it with you know something solid something you know based in uh, every decent human beings you know the the, the gratitude the, the kindness towards people who have been good to you the basic understanding of being grateful for people who take care of you right right yi so we start with benevolence, which is the highest principle, and then if not, then we at least be do right by others, right? Uh, and then, uh, yeah. So the other one is respect, right? Going outwards, you treat people with respect. If you don't know them, at least give them a bit of dignity of, you know, as a fellow people, right? And um, respect comes in the form of um, kindness in, in the form of um, how to say empathy in a sense you you, you feel what they feel and, and you, you see where they come from only then you can have respect uh, without empathy it's very hard to have respect because you always think about from where you stand and you always want to push it forward right even if your position is to negotiate with other people, you know, maybe in, on behalf of your company or on behalf of what you're representing, with respect, you always have that sort of bridge to connect with other people. Even you're in the opposing sides, so say like in warring countries or in in a, a, a strange relationships or in a, um, I don't know different companies fighting tendering, uh, tender for some project beats you, you you have that sense of respect it means that you understand where to stop that behavior of competitions and you understand where to you know treat each other as a just human beings without all the labors on top that's the mindset we severely need in our world as well um, 
uh, and it's not like you know happy go lucky you you understand what you have to do your job but at the same time you still understand they also just doing their job so even though your job is going against their interests you're not trying to eliminate them out of hated hatred um, you can see that a lot in especially the Chinese history right even though the two sides they are fighting wars and stuff like that when that's over they don't they don't have like deep hate or anything they were like okay you are a good warrior man I respect you uh, and then go go home you know reorganize again we'll meet again that level of respect you know what I mean um, respect towards not just your close people your friends your loved ones but also respect towards your enemy All right but where do we start from there we start from our uh, teachers right our friends uh, and and that respect comes out of also self respect a person with self respect can respect other people a person without self respect you know they tremble over themselves by you know having a very negative habits and hurting themselves with you know um, too much you know um, say some people do drugs or some people do um, irrational things that go against in their conscience or they do something foolish that will actually end up hurting their loved ones um, or hurting their body you know drinking too much sleeping too late playing too much game um, those kind of you know draining activities that does not rejuvenate your energy it does not help you um, be a better person be a wiser person because if you want that kind of thing you need to have that level of energy to attract it so to speak you need to have to be that kind of person to attract that kind of thing if you want better stuff you have to be a better person and to be a better person we have to learn how to be um, learn how to carry ourselves with respect and carry ourselves with respect is different from arrogance be careful arrogance is you all are lower than me you know I tremble over you that kind of mindset is definitely a big no no obviously no one will want to be with you work with you have a relationship with you any kind of relationship with you if you are arrogant but if you're always like trembling over yourself no one could help you even they trying to right maybe you have a good quality in yourself but you always overcome by um, your habits you know self-destructing behavior and stuff like that it's very hard to control it but somehow need to find that level of strength to pull yourself through otherwise it just can't get any better people can give you a lot of condition to help you but how do you step out of it you still have to rely on you right even with Amitabha Buddha he gave you the methods the the theories the the, the foolproof theory the methods you know chanting Amitabha for simple straightforward um, the foolproof theory of you know um, having um, uh, 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 right? um, faith a vow and then chanting Amitabha and then all these teachings about life that what we're talking about right now it will not work on you unless you actually take a step on it and if you don't take a step um, the, the, the immotivation to take a step on working on yourself is in your life you reach a different stage where you have your priority changes right and when your priority changes you start to explore like what can I do to improve myself even better like Mr. Leo Fan is sick of his condition right there has to be something missing that makes him think about that right his children is dying right four I think out of four children a lot pass away and then he um, yeah he doesn't have a son sorry sorry that's Eugene Yi Gong Mr. Leo Fan does not have a son he wants a son and he's trying to get one but he couldn't lacking he wants to get to the good position in his life and he couldn't get it just couldn't and also plus the fact that he's been calculated your whole life has been figured out can you imagine that level of helplessness that goes through when your whole life is figured out right now we have uncertainty he has too much certainty set in stone in a sense right Unless, until he met Yun, Master Yun Gu all he can do is oh my my life is just followed by the, like, it's already uh, organized you know to a single letter everything is exactly the same what's the point of me thinking uh, 
Um, so neither of this is good for us. Too much uncertainty, we, 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 we feel lost, we feel like floating. Too many uncertainty, which is this one, you, you thought you'd be like, nothing can be changed, right? Everything is determined, determinism, always, everything is like, or it's, already, it's been fixed, I can't do anything anymore, what's the point? Tangping, you know, in Chinese, we call it, you lie flat, I don't do anything. That's also too much. Moderation, zhong dao, or, you know, zhong yong zi dao, zhong dao, moderation is very important. It's how you gain enlightenment, and it's how you gain success, right? And to do that, uh, like this one, this one is too much. They all want to ask more than what they need. They didn't, they didn't fill in the spiritual need, the emotional needs. They are lacking. That's why they go outside what they have to ask for more, to satiate their bottomless hole. But in the end of the day, when they get it, it does not help them. It will only cause more um, problems. If they do it illegally or in the gray zone, they will get more troubles from the laws. If they if they do it on on at the expense of other people, even though it's legal, but they do it in a very underhanded way, that is, you know, leaving a sour taste in their colleagues or partners and friends in order to maximize their benefit. All they get is just this cold hard cash that that may be exciting for the first few years, but then they'll feel lonely and they need to sleep using the sleeping pills and some of them even ended their life because they feel like, you know, the whole world is not connected with him. So that's that's lacking as well. So what what do we need to learn is that moderation. Seek what you need to seek, but seek it right and and put a full stop and think, where am I going with this? Am I just chasing it blindly, right? It can be money, it can be lust, desires as well, like relationships. It can be also money, which is, you know, wealth. It can be um, fame, you know, all this. Those things will come as a package deal when you have the right kind of mindset. Like Master Ching Kong didn't ask for fame. He didn't ask for wealth. He didn't ask for, um, you know, all these people that flocks to him with utmost admiration and respect. Of course, you also have a lot of people trying to defame him. See, good and bad. He was he was being tempered under that condition, right? Just, but he was unmoved by this, even though he keeps attracting this. You know, a lot of people donate millions and millions and helps, helps he, help him to build up, you know, a school and stuff like that. He just mentioned it as a initiative. He didn't even say, ah, I need to do this and that. He's just like, okay, well, so this is what we should do according to the scriptures because we need this in this current life. And everyone was like, you know, flock to him and do it as to the best of their abilities. Why? He didn't do it out of his own benefit. He do it because he's already very zizu, right? He went to Pure Land. He has nothing else bounding him to this world. He's like, I can go anytime. He even mentioned here back in 1999, this Tyson Gaim pen here, he mentioned, I can go anytime. Why do I have to stay here? Because I only use this body to service people. Right? I can go anytime. This is how big his heart is. Bonus. He has no attachment, no strings. For us, we still have that. Right? Eventually, we need to let go. And we should learn to let go as much as we can. But while we still have that desire, we learn from Lel Fan. Lel Fan tells you, okay, you have desires. Do it right. Right? Um, what do we? How do we do it right? Put our attitude in the right place first. So Leo Fan wants a children, but now he's drinking a lot. He's sleeping very late. How can he have a very healthy body? Right, that is needed to produce children. That's a very f- straightforward. Second thing is, his mind is not um, in the right place as well. Right, his um, his mouth is too sharp. If you're too if you're too forceful, right, in your words, something I need to learn as well. Like if you if you're too wit, your mouth is too sharp, too witty, to the point that it actually hurts people, even though you might not intentionally doing that. Just because you can speak very well, you use that and trying to over overpower other people. 
it's also a sign of people without um, good control over themselves. That means you can't hold this merit even though they appear before you. Um, it will leak through your mouth. Why? Because it becomes um, a karma. It's all about karma. You hurt people, right? You make you, you make them very hard to work with you. Um, and this came out of a place of arrogance as well. You know, you, you thought you know everything and stuff like that. Lack of respect. Um, so there's a fine line we need to gauge in between. Um, yeah, push one subordinates to the breaking point. How can people uh, want to work for you if, you know, if you push them to a breaking point instead of really understand what they need, help them as much as you can, right? As a fellow human, they will willingly work themselves to a breaking point for you in the in the end. That's how that's how some of the boss work is like. They don't even think about it. They were like, okay, we need to um, say, okay, using Inamori Kazuo, right? This um, this guy, he's um, he's a Buddhist. He's an entrepreneur, and he has cancer, and he dropped his work uh, when he had cancer because it's like I built two companies. It's successful. It's running. It's called Kyocera. The other one, I forgot. Electronics technology. Uh, industries and he passed it down to his successors he'd go to a mountain become a monk and then meditate so after a few years people um, the, the crisis happens in Japan airline people inviting him down uh, if the prime minister of that time was asking him could you please come out of your um, uh, you know of your, of your retreat to help us uh, Mr. Kazuo uh, Mr. Inamori please so Basically, like Three Kingdoms, if you guys heard of Three Kingdoms, uh, Liu Bei was asking Zhuge Liang to come out of his um, meditation to help, you know, the world. Same thing. So he was invited out to help the national corporation, which is Japan Airline, which employs a lot of people. That means their bloodline is there, lifeline is there. So what he did first thing is, I do not want a cent because he's rich enough. Right, he has a trust and everything. He don't. He does not need the CEO package. So all he need is he set up the rules and structures because, of course, the house is not in order. That's why it fall apart. So he set up the routine and structure. Every every morning he has fifteen minutes of meeting with everyone on the board. Quick and simple, you know, recite the mantra. Basically, what we did with Amitofo, we recite that, right? So he recite, you know, how what should we do, you know, as a an uh, entity, as a company, right? We should service and all that, do the to the best of what we can. Basically, reiterate that value to the company people. See the mindset, the Sixiang Gongzhuo, the mind works. It's needed to build a cohesive unit. So he did that. He put a lot of hard work. Within two years, he go from negative two billion, I think, negative figures. Uh, margin into positive margin exactly the same amount of positive as the, the it was the negative so negative 2 billion becomes positive 2 billion so what I'm saying is this is a result he has achieved how did he get so big he started with simple thing of you know getting getting the right priorities right first he he understand that as a of course as a Buddhist or as a as a member of a society, we need to work not just for our own benefit. We also need to help the organization to get the benefit. And if they get benefit, everyone gets more benefit. And this is how it should works. And of course, second thing is he, he's abundant. Of course, he's very wealthy and he a, able to stop. Um, he able to not take the salary. He able to focus on, you know, priority on how to build the companies. So he does not have his own self-interest muddy, muddy up in it. He's just purely there as an advisor, you know, lifting the company out of the crisis and then let it go. Let it run according to his princ uh, operating principle. So as big as this big corporation, as small as our family, as small as our own self, we need to um, work on that as well. Um, so love and respect. Uh, I think I'll stop here because it's already 9 uh, or 9. Anyone has any questions? Um, 
Jenny or Auntie Yenzi, feel free to ask. If you're too shy, you can type it in the chat. Yeah, for you, for you once, right? We don't know what happened before, so now we learn. right? And now, now we learn. If we still haven't actually learned from the lessons and allowed this to happen again, then it's up to us. And it's 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 on us. The the debt is um, the consequences is on us. Uh, and that's how it should be. Uh, carry ourselves. Yeah. <clears throat> yep. So we'll continue on this one. Um, just, you know, remember uh, all this is all about uh, how do we, um, how do we operate, place ourselves in this world? Where where do you stand in this world? You know, uh, what kind of people do I want to be? Right? Uh, I might not know what I want to do now. I might not know what I'm going to do in five years or 10 years. But what's, what matters now, right? No matter what ser- situation it is, right? It's the type of attitude we have, the type of um, state of mind we have. Uh, we can't be perfect, but we need to ensure we are continuously improving for the better. We always think about um, you know, growing, growing and get better, right? We need to also think about what grow means. It's not just about attaching more digits to our net worth. That is very, very small part of it. It's also about how do we be connected, connected to the people around us? How do we channel ourselves to the roots so that we can grow better? And roots, right? It's based on love and respect to people who has done a lot for you. Right? Be grateful. Be um, abund- um, Have a heart of abundance. You no, know, be content. Um, the only thing we shouldn't be content of is our pursuit of, you know, wisdom. It's our pursuit of. Um, spiritual, emotional uh, fulfillment. Those things needs needs uh, uh, to cultivate a lot of giving, right? They teach about giving, you know, teach about no harm, restraining ourselves, being patient, being um, able to um, put ourselves together even though we are very agitated, we, very, uh, we really want this thing. How do we hold ourselves back from uh, being swayed by it? How do we uh, how do we keep ourselves calm in face of that or in face of crisis or in face of these rewards that are coming to you how do we remain in um, in charge right uh, we can be excited we can be happy we can be sad but we still need to um, go back to our roots no matter how high how big we have climbed and only then you can go further only then you can grow more merits and fortune. If we go all the way up there and we forgot about it, or if we um, got a crisis and we got like, there's no root, then we got, you know, alienated quickly. We got removed easily from our source of energy. And then we only get more estranged, more lonely. And it's very hard to achieve anything if we just, um, feeling isolated right um, Buddha and Bodhisattvas right when you look at their story when I talk about Buddha's story how many people has to help him uh, has to appear cooperate with him to carry out this teaching performance so to speak it's a, it's a performance in a sense as well like he's showing you how it's done and he needs you know, these top 10 disciples and 2,500 of the disciples um, and a lot of other kings and families. See, so many people flock to him. So to, how do you concentrate people's wishes and hopes? Right? How does one attract that level? Is when he or she has that heart to incorporate their wishes and hopes into their own, into this person's wishes and hopes. So neither yuan just or the yuan, yao de just or yao de, right? And the common ground 
that everyone has, right? It's no more than having a peaceful life with, and, uh, with love, with care, and also with a healthy growth prospects. You know, they're not hungry. They are not feeling uh, truncated in their life. They're not feeling like going nowhere. Their family's doing well. You know, um, everyone's feeling safe, not just doing well in security, but feeling secure, feeling actually content, no longer more um, volatile. Um, that is what we yearn for. And that is something we need to learn from the sages. How did they do that in the past? And what kind of, you know, even though it's a short time, like a few hundred years, it's not an easy task to achieve. Even a few hundred years or a few decades of, of peace that everyone's content mostly and not not too many sufferings, something we can rely, uh, refer to and to our current life. So I'll stop here uh, for our reflections and in, in for, the, for the rest of the week. Thank you for coming, guys. Um, good to have you here, Jenny. Uh, thanks for going through this one hour with me. Um, and uh, Auntie Yenzi, as usual, thank you so much. May the merits and virtues adorn the Buddha's pure land, repay the four kinds of kindness above, and relieve the sufferings of those in the three paths below. May those who see and hear of this all bring forth the heart of understanding and compassion and leave the teachings for the rest of this life, then be born together in the land of ultimate bliss. A mi to for 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 a mi for for a mi to for a mi to for a mi to for a mi to for just like when we chant a mi to for we visualize the pure land we visualize the buddha we visualize our reborn so when you can use the same principle in your life as well every day you visualize what you want and then you let it go Chani Ami Tofu is the same principle. And the more stronger it is in your mind, yeah, your behavior and everything will be directed towards that. So good luck, guys. Uh, we'll have more of this discussion. This weekend, we have Venerable Wooling's talk. Uh, it's all online. Feel free to tune in uh, 10.30 to 12 this Sunday. So looking forward to see you guys there. Uh, Ami Tofu. Good night.